the Sea Beast 2022. For ages, marine monsters have emerged from the depths, unleashing chaos upon humanity. In response, squads of hunters set sail on their vessels to combat these creatures, with the most renowned and accomplished among them being the crew of the inevitable. This distinguished crew is led by the legendary Captain Crow, supported by his first mate, Sarah Sharp, and his adopted son and bosun, Jacob Holland. The monarchy, represented by the King and Queen of the Crown, backs these hunters through the Three Bridges Society due to their historical success. Following a perilous encounter during a hunt, Captain Crow confides in Jacob, promising him captaincy once they vanquish Red Bluster, the adversary who had cost Crow his left eye years prior. Upon returning to Three Bridges to claim their reward for the latest triumph, the King and Queen drop a bombshell. They intend to replace the traditional hunters with the modern naval vessel Imperator, commanded by Admiral Eric Hornigold. Their rationale is rooted in cost-effectiveness and the perceived technological obsolescence of the hunting crews. This revelation infuriates Crow and Sarah, leading to a tense situation that almost results in their arrest. In a bold move, Jacob intervenes and proposes a final opportunity for his crew to prove their worth, the elimination of Red Bluster. Admiral Hornigold reluctantly agrees, and a contest is declared by the Crown, pitting the crews of the Imperator against the inevitable. The outcome will determine the team entrusted with hunting the sea beasts on behalf of the monarchy. After they depart, the crew discovers an orphan girl named Maisie Brumble has stowed away on the ship to join them, having been inspired to do so by her late parents, who were themselves hunters. The inevitable finds and attacks Red Bluster. When the ship is in danger of being pulled under, against Crow's orders, Jacob hesitantly allows Maisie to cut Bluster free, which saves the crew but lets the monster escape and throws Jacob and Maisie into the sea. Angered, Crow holds both of them at gunpoint and demands Jacob bring Maisie to him before Bluster emerges from the depths and swallows Maisie and Jacob whole. Jacob and Maisie are taken to an isolated island populated by several other beasts. Maisie discovers that Bluster is not malicious and befriends the beast, renaming her Red, while also befriending a smaller beast named Blue. Maisie begins to believe the monsters are really just misunderstood creatures, which Jacob initially denies. Jacob and Maisie convince Red to take them to Rum Pepper Island, so they can secure a ship to return to Three Bridges. Believing Jacob to be dead, a grieving crow seeks out the renowned hunter and merchant Gwen Batterby, who gives Crow a poison-tipped harpoon powerful enough to kill Red. While traveling on Red's back, Jacob and Maisie bond with the creature and each other with Jacob growing to support Maisie's belief that the beasts are innocent. They reach Rum Pepper Island, but discover the Imperator and Hornigold are stationed there. Red attacks the vessel after being shot at and inadvertently wounds Maisie in the scuffle. After she destroys the Imperator, Jacob stops Red's rampage and prevents her from killing Hornigold, but re-engages after she spots the inevitable and nearly dies after being struck with the poison-tipped harpoon. With Crow keeping her alive long enough to bring her to the crown as a trophy, Maisie is nursed back to health, but then imprisoned aboard the inevitable as it arrives at three bridges with Red in tow. After Blue frees Maisie, she realizes the hatred of Sea Beast is simply propaganda created by the crown to extend their corrupt rule. Crow prepares to publicly execute Red before being stopped by Jacob. Crow and Jacob fight, while Maisie and Sarah, who begins to believe Maisie's worldview of the beasts, free Red from her binds. Maisie and Jacob convince Red to spare Crow, subsequently exposing the crown for their deceptions. After witnessing the passive nature of the beasts, Crow and the people of the kingdom renounce their beliefs. With Red and the other sea beasts left alone, Maisie, Jacob, and Blue begin their new lives together as a family. To be fair, the sea beast takes a bit too long to build up steam, and there's a tighter 100-minute version of this film within its two-hour runtime. I wanted to tighten it up in a few places, and I do wish the world building was a little stronger. Some of the locations also feel thinly designed, although if all the time and budget went to the beautifully rendered monsters, that's understandable. Most of all, and this is rare nowadays in American animation, I admire the script of The Sea Beast, one that intertwines those aforementioned obvious influences into something refreshingly daring. This movie takes narrative risks in that it's a monster-hunting movie that's ultimately anti-violence. It's the kind of thing good parents look for in that it both entertains and provokes conversation. 
and it's a hopeful sign that Netflix could start to become a more prominent voice in original animation, as long as they're willing to make movies as rich as the Sea Beast. I'm not